<laughs> and welcome back. Earlier this week, we had the opportunity to sit down with Hanson. It goes a little something like this. <laughs> welcome back to Be You Tonight. This is our first and last Grammy Award winning guest. I'd like to please welcome Hanson to the show. <laughs> yes, please. Not for me, not for me. Give it up to them. You can give it up to me another episode. Yeah, well, that sounds sexual. Yeah, yeah it's, lovely. it's true. It's, it's very sexual. Thank, you, thank, you, thank yeah. you, gentlemen, for coming to the show. Yeah, I was originally going to go by and give you all high fives. Yes. So I'm gonna, Aren't we glad I'm gonna you didn't go all the way? I'm going to give you an air it's, high five. It's, it's okay. Tail. It's good. Tail, can I call you Tay? Yes. Uh, sure. Feel free. I'm calling you Tay. <laughs> thank you, Tay. Back, you call him uh, Bogwandis. Bogwandis? <laughs> Bogwandis? Uh, I know that you're now on a traveling tour, and uh, most the question that everyone is thinking of right now is, have you guys ever trashed a hotel room? Oh, um, yes, we have. You we have? have. I, I, I mean, we've, we've done some pretty A few? Things. We've roasted a I few goats. I remember looging on people's heads in France. That's <laughs> great. Huh? Yeah. He dropped TVs. Hey, yeah, fun, 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 fun in France. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not even famous, and I've trashed like nine hotel rooms. <laughs> I'm, I'm not allowed at the Ramada Inn for numerous reasons. All right? Yeah, none of them have to do with trashing hey, hotels. Stealing <laughs> all the lotion bottles does not consist of trashing. <laughs> <laughs> How true. How true. How dare you judge me with my lotion bottle stealing. <laughs> but what <could> I say? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're actually at B right now in order to screen a documentary that you made. It's yeah. called Strong Enough to Break. And mm -hmm. I know originally it was about the recording process mm -hmm. for your movie, or not your movie, because you don't have it. For a record. Yes, record. I'm going to get so fired from this episode. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. I'm really drunk right now. <laughs> Anywho, uh, no, you were actually doing it to you know show the process of how you make an album, but it turned into something completely different. Uh, yeah. like, what, how did it become? And like, tell them what it's about, because it's well, very interesting. I mean, I think that's the nature of a documentary, but. But you know, it started off. The the filmmaker came to us. His name was Ashley Grayson, and he had uh, he had filmed stuff for us before, and uh, we felt comfortable with him. And so he came and said, "I want to make a documentary about making records." Yeah. And um, basically, we started making this film, and because the process turned into something different, because the process was so elongated and unmotivated mm -hmm. on our label side, right. um, it really became a film about that about the process of trying to get to the point of being able to make records. Instead of and a film about music, it became a film about how do you, how do you even get to making music? How hard right. it is well, to get to making music. Yeah. It also then turned into you know our decision. We formed our own label, left that company. Mm. Um, we have an independent record company right, now. Right, 3CG. 3CG that's Records. That's records. Right. And uh, you know, I think the importance of the film is not seeing Hanson, but this film, I think, represents um, what so many bands go through right. in major label systems right now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically some form of these kind of problems right. every band that's out there is going through. Like, I know that you're really fighting for independent music getting, like, back into the mainstream mm -hmm. and that, like, I, I know Clear Channel owns, I think, most of the world. I think, <laughs> yeah. they're, I think Clear Channel's, like, its own sovereign <laughs> yeah. nation at this Stalin point. Stalin and, you, and, and <laughs> yeah. Clear Channel. I've never trusted good. Stalin, as you know. <laughs> what we're talking about with independent music is really, you know, there was a time when major labels were healthier. It was a better system that was being more successful. Mm -hmm. and, and independent meant more niche music meant something that doesn't necessarily appeal to the mainstream of right. people who want it to buy really music. It really kind of became indie rock, quote yeah, that, unquote, was yeah. what the genre you know, was. But um, nowadays, what's happening is basically um, with so much consolidation in the major systems, uh, they've lost a lot of focus on their real job of, right. of selling music and giving people quality and gaining that trust from fans. And, and what's happening is uh, independent labels, smaller companies are coming and filling the gaps that they're leaving and, mm -hmm. and really doing their job properly. And, mm -hmm. you know, we all need to remember, I mean, at one point, A&M was a small independent label. Yeah. And so was Arista, and so was Island, and so was Columbia, and so was every I haven't heard other, of any of those. Yes. Uh, but every, <laughs> every major was at one point yeah. an independent company. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just a rebirth in the industry where a lot of new technologies and, um, New ways of finding music and iPods and you know yeah. MP3 players are are really revolutionizing um, the ways that people are, are going to get music and sell music and so yeah. um, it's really a time where there's a rebirth happening and, and, and young people need to be involved too, yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in what those avenues are in, yeah, yeah. in deciding how we as an industry are gonna. Uh, get music to them and how mm -hmm. they're going to be involved in making sure the music that's out there is mm -hmm. the music they want to hear. Now I know I know you've changed your image completely. Uh, so like, was it hard to change like 
I mean, to change the perception of how people saw you become an indie rocker? Well, I mean, it started by becoming Bhagwan, just the whole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. 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 As, it was well, hard to get is, people well, to pronounce we, that yeah, name. We haven't, we, we haven't really, ch I mean, we haven't changed our image. Yeah. I mean, when we started out, we were really young. Yeah. And we all had long blonde hair. And mm -hmm. that was, uh, and it was like, wow, those three little kids with long blonde hair. That was what people perceived as our image. Yeah. But that wasn't fabricated. We just right, were right. guys in a band that, you know, didn't cut our hair. And we were really young. And when you have an 11 year old drummer, it's like, of course, you know, people are going to perceive you. They're going to look at it first and be like, that couldn't be for real. Yeah. Um, we just, as a band, naturally evolved every record. And I think the fact that we're independent, you know, allows for kind of this new look at, okay, well, you know, what is it that they're doing? It makes people assume that suddenly you're, you know, maybe more credible or something right. like that. But the truth is that, um, you know, the reason we became independent was so that we could stay on the path we'd always been, which was to naturally change, naturally go through, you know, uh, evolutions. I mean, every band, every band that I love, you know, has done that. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I think, it is a challenge, though. It's a challenge yeah. to continue to get people on page with what it is you're doing. Yeah. Um, and every band has that challenge. Yeah. Um, we just, you know, have such a rare, you know, career, which is, you know, that we came out when we were, you know, we've been a band for 13 years, yeah. and I'm 22. Zach's yeah. 20 years old. I mean, that's that's a large percentage of your life. Yeah, yeah. And so I think we just had this whole like head start, you know, which we're lucky we did because now we're still in our early 20s and we're, you know, we own our own record company and yeah. hopefully we still will have a lot more time where we're, you know, making music. Yeah, well that actually leads me to another question that you are brothers and my question is do you ever get in like brotherly fights like about like the direction of the music? Like if Zach ever been like, I want to play the glockenspiel. <laughs> You're like, I don't think that's a really good choice. We, we, no, but um, he does, he does like play the sousaphone, yes. Yeah, no, the sousaphone is a great one that we've tried to really incorporate. Yeah, incorporate. Also known as the new tuba. album. I've also, yeah, have you ever like, I mean, I know you're only, like, you have three, obviously. And uh, have you been like, man, we could really use, like, a whole orchestra of mom. We need more, we need more brothers. <laughs> like, we, need a, we need a more we, vibrant we sound. We actually come from seven, so there's four seven. underneath me. What, so. do, they, do they play, like, triangle and stuff? Yeah, they, they, do, they do. And you're like, sorry, your sound's not matching yeah. until you have this huge um, orchestra well, sound. Like, they actually we actually all play four steel, triangles. They, they <laughs> all play steel drums. Steel drums? Yeah. That's what I've always been like, you know what? This really needs steel when, drums. When we were, when we were raised in... Um, Venezuela, they uh, they picked up steel drums. Yeah, I know you actually yeah. were this. They, they actually, you know, started. For everyone who doesn't know, steel drums were invented by uh, beating out oil um, can tanks. tanks. Yeah, yeah. The, um, Point cans, them. tanks. Barrels. So that was the barrels were. They would beat them into tones, and so they just were out there in the oil rigs, and they just hammered them in, and they really combining reality I, and and being facetious. People are like really confused. Yeah, and they're like, what's going? Like, uh, I really, all I can say is I just went. Yeah. <laughs> I think every week that you guys should just like, I know you're not in Boston, but we'll fly you in every week. Yeah. And you'll just be like, now, a fact from Hanson that you didn't know. Like, exactly. Today's fact is, do you know that bananas do this? And they're like, just <laughs> random facts. Idea. We, we like that idea. It, it's yeah. something like um, a 10 teaspoons of, of uh, tomato sauce or the equivalent of the same <laughs> vitamin content as 100 uncooked tomatoes. <laughs> And that's like a real fact. Yeah. I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's it's mind-boggling. I can yeah, it sounds, it's a good <laughs> random fact. Yeah, these are, <laughs> this is what we should have done the whole interview is just random <laughs> facts. We're like, what's going on? Yeah, like, no. did, uh, is this Hanson? Is D Hanson? Yeah. And actually, yeah. like, we gave up music and we're now into trivial pursuits. <laughs> yes. That's, exactly. that's what we do now. And in yeah. some ways, you could say that music is almost a trivial pursuit I, at times. Yeah, no. I'm, yeah. A, I'm actually a professional dungeon master for Dungeons and yeah. Dragons. <laughs> Me too. I was going to wear a cape tonight, but my producer said no. And then I was going to, like, bring dice out, and that's yeah. all we were going to do. <laughs> now, uh, Bowanda, I know that you. Uh, Shot of Bogwanda. Bogwanda. I am going to get so fired from this. This is unbelievable. You guys shot a video in Boston. Uh, yes. For yeah. Underneath. Now, yeah. was that just uh, was that intentional or was that like kind of just you were? No, we in were Boston. just driving down through Boston. We're like, there's these guys shooting a video. We just yeah. Like, kind of <laughs> we got yeah. It. yeah. I no, their it was in, it was intentional, but it was it um, basically we we were on the road last summer. It was the second single off the last record. Yeah. And um, we just uh, we're, liked the venue and yeah. Actually, um, we filmed. Part of the video in the same venue that we're playing, playing the Avalon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so so we yeah, filmed a little bit of that. You know. We just wanted to get um, just kind of the energy. We filmed some of it, you know, down at yeah. the in the docks. Yeah. Actually, uh, Taylor got really, really pissed off in that music video uh, filming, and actually 
put oh, a hole Isaac, in Isaac, you're not allowed to say yeah. pissed off on the show. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't want to stab on you, bro. No, actually, yeah, pissed off. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I was, shit. I, I was actually, no, I realized, <laughs> I was starting to- Fargan ice yeah. hole! I, I, I made, I did some pretty serious damage to the wall, and, yeah. and I was forgetting that we'd already moved on and we'd already paid for it, so yeah. I was trying, so now that I realized that it's already over. Now take matter. that mentality of damaging walls to Ramada Inn and you got yourself <laughs> yes. a good time. Yeah. yeah. You bring uh, the lotion. I know. I'll steal the lotion. They're like, who took the lotion? Nah, Christian. <laughs> who, was, was he in our trunk? How did yeah. he get with us? And the answer is yes. He I can just be that trunk. random TV host that just pops up <laughs> yeah. in our hotel room. <laughs> When you said, I'm oh, Christian, I thought you were saying the religion. Yeah, I know. Most people do. I got that lotion. Yeah. They're Christians. Christians. I know. All right, well, thank you guys. Oh, <laughs> thank you guys for being here. I got to plug the album. It's live and electric. It's uh, available in stores. You guys are playing at the Avalon tonight. I want to thank yes, you again yes, for being here. Are. Ladies and gentlemen, Hanson. Thank you.